Hey there, AJ Casada, co-founder of Revenue Boost. And five years ago, I landed my first ever whale client. It was a client for my paid advertising agency who was paying me and my team $15,000 a month. When this happened, it changed everything for me. It changed my entire mindset on how to grow my business. Because the thing is, this client was paying us so much more than other clients that were really small businesses, but it wasn't that much more work. I was getting paid like 10 times more for the same skill, the same expertise, and almost the same amount of work as working with these small clients. And then I realized that if I got this one big client, I could land more. And then I just focused on landing whale clients. And it was the most growth I ever had in a short period of time, which is focusing on landing these big fish. So I realized recently that a lot of other people wanted to learn about this. I've been getting asked a lot and DM'd a lot on social media, like, how do I sign bigger clients? I want to increase my prices. How do I create a higher ticket offer? Or how do I find these whale clients? How do I find these big companies that have a bigger, you know, more expensive problem to solve, right? Well, with all that, you know, I actually made a poll recently in our Facebook group asking people like, what is the number one thing you want to learn about generating leads and clients? And the most common thing was like, hey, how do I land well clients? So knowing that this is super important, I decided to host a three part video series, three different videos, each covering a different aspect of how we find and close big fish whale clients. So it's whale hunting season, it's on, and you're gonna love today's video because this is part one of the three part series on how to find and close whale clients. So hope you enjoy it. And if you do, please subscribe so you can get notified of our new videos. We post a new video every week. And anyways, I'm gonna hop over to my computer now, go to the screen, share some slides, and walk you through part one of the three part series. So let's do it. Welcome guys to another episode of How to Scale an Agency. This is gonna be an episode on how to land whale clients and this is gonna be the part one. And this is really the secret to earning more without actually working more and making your business mega profitable. So today's episode is part one of a three part series on how to land whale clients. And this is to help you learn how to increase your prices, find and land big fish clients to help you get paid five to 10 X more for the same work you're already doing. So it's really exciting. This is really, again, the true secret to earning more money from less time spent. And if you've been struggling to break past your current revenue level, maybe you're trying to break past 20, 30, 50 K a month, whatever it is, this is honestly the number one thing you can do to solve that in a short amount of time and just be able to get a massive revenue boost in really just a few months time. And why I decided to make this series, a three part series, first of all, four years ago, I landed my first whale client, which changed everything for me. And this was back when I was doing Facebook and Google ad lead gen and running magic clicks. And we got a client to pay us $15,000 a month. And that was everything. That was like more than four times what our other clients were paying us. And it absolutely just changed my mindset because I realized, wait, for this client who's paying me 15 grand a month, first of all, this covers all my overhead. By the time that was all my payroll, all the team. So it was just one client that paid all the bills. Second of all, I realized that client wasn't actually 10 times more work than everyone else, right? It was, he was paying me so much more, but he was actually easier to deal with. And then I got the second one and the third one paying the same amount. And it just opened my eyes up to like how different and how much easier this game can be and how it's not as hard as you think to land these big whale clients, right? And once you get one, they'll refer you to others and that's what happened to me. So this changed everything for me. And then after I did that four years ago, now at Revenue Boost where we consult and coach other agencies, I've been helping other people do the same and create higher ticket offers or super high ticket offers. And it's changed everything for them too, right? Just change how they run their business, it's become more profitable. And now they've seen this work over and over again, I wanted to make a training on it. And recently I did a poll with 8,000 agencies from our Facebook community and I found that this was the number one thing that everyone wanted to learn. This was like the hot topic, the biggest question. And I've been getting DM'd about it constantly on like, how do I land well clients? How do I make my offer? How do I make my price? And honestly, like I realized there's no other good information out there on this, right? No one really talks about this. So that's why I decided to not only just do a live on this, but make this a three part series in the podcast. So look, like I talk to agencies and consultants all the time who have a lot of clients already and the business is making okay profit, but they, the common thread is they feel like they're, what they're taking home isn't worth it compared to all the effort they put in and just something needs to change. And a lot of times when I'm speaking with a client about this before we work together, they're, they're getting leads, they're closing clients, they're fulfilling and they're getting happy clients, getting case studies, but they're still not left with much profit at the end of the month. And it feels like they're working too much for too little. That's the common thread I hear. And that's how this is completely relates to whale clients. Because I had the same problem for years for my own agency four years back. And again, after consulting other agencies at Revenue Boost, I've seen this a lot. The reason why this happens, even if you feel like you're doing all you can when it comes to getting leads, improving your sales process, getting better at sales calls, making your fulfillment better and getting even more case studies, the reason you could be doing everything right, but this still happens, is because you're not addressing the core issue, which is that it's who you sell and what you sell that has more of an impact on your growth and your profits than anything else. It's these two things that set up your entire business from the start, right? 
So creating a higher ticket offer and selling to whale clients who can pay you more is the way to solve this. There's no, there's no bigger lever to pull in your business than who you're selling, the niche, and what you're selling them, the offer, right? So first, what a whale client is. This might mean different things to different people, but I would define a whale client as just someone who's a client who can pay you a lot more than what you currently get paid on average. So for some of you, a whale client could seem like only three grand a month if you're selling retainers for only $500, $1,000 a month or whatever it is. For some of you, a whale client would be someone who's paying you like 50K a month or, or 50K in total or 100K for a consulting deal. Whatever it is, I know we have different people that are listening to the podcast where they already have a seven, eight figure business, some people that are just starting out. So just look at a whale as anyone who's just way bigger than the typical client or the typical project size retainer that you get now. But first, like why clients? Why go through all the effort to make a change in your business and your offer and learn this? Okay, yeah, if I get whale clients, I get paid more, but there's a lot of deeper reasons as to why this is going to help you. First of all, imagine this, and this was the poll I did recently in the Facebook group that inspired this series. So I asked people, which would you rather have? Would you rather have 50 clients paying you $1,000 a month, which would become $50,000 in revenue, or five clients paying you $10,000 a month, which would also become $50,000 in revenue? And the overwhelming majority said they like scenario two, having less clients, less to manage, but paying you more. And here's the thing, here's why this matters. In both scenarios, you're making the same revenue, but in scenario one, you have way more work. It's so much more work to manage 50 clients than it is to manage five. And think about this, the time that you spend on relationship management and account management, it ends up being about the same regardless of how big the client is. And sometimes the bigger clients actually require less of your time because they're so busy and they have bigger fish to fry than nitpick what you're doing. Basically, there's a fixed cost of your time with managing any amount, any client, right? The account management, the reporting, the check-ins, the building the relationship, all of that, right? And that doesn't really change as you scale up. So it's a lot more work to manage 50 clients than it is to manage five, obviously, right? And really, so basically doing more work for the same amount of money, that's not ideal, right? But it actually goes deeper than that. It's not even the same amount of money. Yes, in scenario one and scenario two, 50 clients at 1K a month versus five clients at 10K a month. Yes, it is the same amount of revenue, but it's actually less profit when you serve the 50 clients. And that's because to manage 50 clients, you need to have a lot more fixed costs to run the business, more admin, more account management, more staff, and also more marketing and sales costs to bring in that many clients, right? So all the costs of booking calls, generating leads, content creation, whatever it is you do, right? So the amount of sales effort is 10 times the more, which means the amount of time, energy, and expense is 10 times more. In summary, clients mean less work, less cost, and more profit. And why else? Here's another thing. Acquisition is actually the same. I found that it's roughly the same amount of work to get five tiny clients than it is to get five well clients. Like really if you think about it, you're going through all of the same motions of doing outreach, if that's how you get clients, generating leads, booking calls, doing calls, making proposals and following up. Like all that work is pretty much the same, right? The only thing that's different is when you deal with well clients, you might have a couple of extra decision makers there. So it might require an extra call or two, but generally speaking, the work to get these leads and close them is about the same, right? The only difference is which market you're focused on. So if you're gonna put in the same amount of time and effort anyway to get clients, why not focus on a higher leverage opportunity? And here's the really interesting part. A very small business paying you $1,000 a month compared to a very large business paying you $5,000 or $10,000 a month, to you, it's a different amount of money. To you, you see those bigger whale clients as paying you so much more and it's a bigger deal, right? But to them, it's not. That small business paying you 1K a month looks at you as the same, they look at you with the same lens as a big business that's paying you $10,000 a month. And the reason is because it's about relativity, right? Because the business doing a really small, like hyper local business doing, let's say 250 grand a year, that's paying you $1,000 a month, which is $12,000 a year, they're giving you 5% of their revenue, right? For your marketing services or whatever it is you sell, just in this example, right? And now a business that's bigger doing two and, a, two and a half million a year, paying you 10K a month, which is 120K a year, it's again, a lot more money, but it's still 5% of their revenue. So it's not any harder to sell a bigger package, contrary to what most people think. It's not any harder to ask a bigger business for 10K a month compared to asking a small business for 1K a month because the bigger businesses, they have a different view on what a lot of money is. They have a different threshold, right? And it's just, so it's the same amount of decision-making energy. Because again, yes, once in a year, you're asking for a lot more money, but it's still the same overall percentage of their overall revenue. So they look at $10,000 the same way that a small business might only look at 500 bucks or a thousand bucks a month. So I hope that makes sense. And the reason I say this is because a lot of people, they wanna charge more, they wanna create these higher ticket or super high ticket packages, but they feel like, oh my God, it's so much to ask for that. But it's really not. If you're talking to a business who's dealing with bigger numbers, it's the same thing. Now, one last note, if you went from selling a $2,000 a month package to a $10,000 a month package, the work doesn't always correlate on a one-on-one -on -one basis. So a lot of people think that, okay, if I 5X my price, I'm 5Xing the amount of work involved, but that's actually not the case. 
And again, there's fixed costs that don't change, right? There's some things that are the same and the same amount of effort with a smaller client than with a big client, right? The relationship management, the account management, the reporting, the onboarding, all of that, right? It's not actually the same amount of work as you scale up to bigger clients. What this means is that if you double your price and you double your revenue per client, you could actually triple or quadruple your profit by leveraging these economies of scale. So that's a really cool thing, right? Like most people think, okay, if I double my price and you know, then I'm making twice as much per client, but you're actually not. You're making twice as much in revenue, but a lot more in profit because the costs don't scale on a one-to-one -one basis. And also by leveraging the fact that you're doing the same work, but for a bigger business where the value received is much bigger, you're able to really get paid more for often the same amount of work you do for a smaller client. Powerful, right? Let's talk about how to craft your offer. I'll tell your story about Starbucks. So when you walk into a Starbucks, most Starbucks at least, they have most of their products are between what, like three and $10, right? Probably a lot more now if you're in New York City. But they sell these really inexpensive products like a cup of coffee, bagel, whatever it is. However, they also have at many Starbucks, they have a $2,000 or $3,000 coffee machine that they sell. So think about that, right? They're in the business of selling $5 cup of coffee, but they still have a $3,000 product in the store. And why is that? The reason is because they know that some of the clients walking in are gonna be those whale clients who are just coffee fanatics and have a lot of money and would, would wanna buy, like they, they'd wanna go all in on the hobby, right? They wanna just do this at home, right? So yes, not the average client walking in is gonna walk out with a $3,000 espresso machine, but a small percentage are who otherwise wouldn't have paid them three grand if they didn't have the offer in the first place, right? So the first lesson in this is that there are clients out there where like, no matter what you sell, no matter what market you're in, there's clients in your market who, where like money is no object, right? They want the best, they want the highest level of service and they will pay whatever for it, right? And this is the 80-20 rule. 20% of your audience has more spending power than the rest. And 20% of that 20%, maybe like 5% of your audience, they're just rich and they just wanna pay for the best thing you can have, right? Another example is hotel. Every hotel, they have different tiers. They have the regular room, then they have the king or queen's rooms, and then they have, every hotel has that penthouse where it's just a ridiculous exorbitant amount of money, but they know that some guests coming in, they wanna pay for the best. And if they didn't have that option there for them, they would have just paid a normal amount like everyone else, right? So no matter what you're selling, there's always that percentage of the market where they have so much money where it just doesn't matter. Money's not a problem and they want the best thing you can give them, right? The second lesson is that if you want bigger clients, you need to have an offer for them. Nobody would have just asked Starbucks, oh, hey, do you guys, can you guys sell me your coffee machine, right? No one would have just proactively done that as a customer. Starbucks anticipated this need, anticipated that a percentage of their market is the big spenders, and they created the offer first to have something available for those high ticket buyers. So I, I, I hear a lot of agencies ask me like, hey, like how do I, I'm not getting any well clients, but then I look at their pricing and they just have like normal packages, normal pricing for small businesses. If you don't have an offer for these well clients, you're not gonna get them, right? You need to be the one to take the first step, right? And go out and create an offer and tell everyone, right? So what this means is that whale clients are not gonna fall out of the sky. You need to come up with a premium level offer for them and make it known to everyone you talk to. So you've gotta start the process. Now, how can you create yours? So here's a really great brainstorming exercise that I recommend all of you do to figure out how can you create a higher ticket offer because I'm not just saying raise your prices to $10,000 a month, I'm saying like you have to provide more value too, right? So just think about this. Imagine a client in your target market is giving you a blank check. Like they just absolutely, completely love what you do, trust you to the moon, and they're giving you a blank check. They're a billionaire, right? And they're saying, hey, I want you to do as much as you can to help me solve this problem. I want you to give me as much value as you can, do as much for me as you can possibly do to help me with my business, right? And, and they're gonna pay you an unlimited amount of money. It's only up to you just to decide like what are all the possible things you could do for them. After listening to this today, go sit down with a journal and just imagine someone's giving you a blank check and they want all the bells and whistles, every possible thing you and your team can do for them to help them with their business and help them solve their problems. And just brainstorm every single thing. And first, don't judge it. Don't think, oh, that's a stupid idea or, oh, that's gonna be too expensive or I'm not sure if I'm willing to do that. Don't let that critic come out. Don't analyze it. Whenever I'm brainstorming anything, I like to just first free flow and just do a complete brain dump and just let whatever's on my mind come out. And then you can look at it later and then start to analyze and toss out the bad ideas, right? But the best thing first is just to dump out all of your ideas on paper and just list out every possible thing you can do if someone just gave you an unlimited budget. And this is gonna bring up some ideas for you that you would have never thought about before. Then after you have this long list on your sheet of paper or a whiteboard or whatever floats your boat, then you can start to pick and choose and look at things that maybe aren't really, maybe you're not willing to do, maybe they just seem really complicated, whatever it is, right? So you can then start to sift and sort and just cross out the things that you don't wanna do or you don't wanna get involved in. But first, brainstorm everything and then you can pick and choose the ideas that you think add the most value and you're actually willing to do and would be excited to do. So this is your first brainstorming exercise. 
This is going to give you the seeds for how you can actually pack more value into a super high ticket offer. Now, after that, the next action step around enhancing your offer is you have to understand the true value you provide. A lot of people don't actually know this, right? So where most people go wrong, most agencies, most service providers go wrong is they, they create their pricing based on what it costs them, right? So most people think, okay, it costs me whatever, a thousand dollars a month to deliver this, you know, between my team and my time and the software, whatever it is. And then they think, okay, I want to make triple that or quadruple that because I've heard that a good profit margin is 60 to 80%, right? So most people just, you know, base their pricing based on what it costs them. And then they add a markup. This is not the right way to do it or worse. What a lot of people do is they base their pricing on what they think their clients can afford. So they know, okay, my clients usually tell me they only have this budget. So I'm going to try to fit my offer, fit my services, fit my pricing within that, and hopefully still make a good profit. That's the worst thing you can do because you don't want the client dictating what your offer, what your business looks like. You want to create that on your own intentionally and try to fit clients within that, right? So what you should do instead is instead of shifting to this cost-based pricing, shift to value-based pricing. So define your pricing based on the value to a client, right? Think about what your offer does. When you solve the problem for your clients, how does it actually impact their business? And understand the true value of what you do. And then you base your pricing based on a fair percentage of that, 5%, 10%, 20%, whatever it is. So think about it like this. If your services helped make a client an extra $1 million a year, and you were only charging a few thousand a month, then there's misalignment and you're not really getting paid what you're worth. And this is the case for a lot of you listening. A lot of you are probably only receiving a tiny percent of the value you're bringing to your clients' businesses. And it's just because you're not fully aware of the actual end outcome your clients get. You know the service, right? You know the service you do, you know the deliverables you provide, but most people aren't actually aware of the end outcome that your clients get, right? And that's because in business, we tend to focus so much on ourselves. We focus on our business, our operations, our services, our deliverables, rather than really putting ourselves in the shoes of our clients more and understanding like, how does this look for them? How does this impact them? How does this help their business six, 12 months, two years later, right? So you have to really shift, you have to really flip the script and shift your thinking to understand this. Imagine that you helped a client generate an extra million dollars per year, right? And I don't just mean like actual revenue. I'm not just talking for those of you that are selling like a very revenue-based service like ads or sales or leads. Like even if you're doing something else like branding or business consulting or operations consulting or staffing, whatever it is, you can still get a rough estimate of how much value does it provide to their business, right? But anyways, imagine you're generating a client an extra million dollars per year in value. They'd have no problem paying you 10K to 20K a month when it's framed like that because that's just 100K to 200K a year out of that 1 million, right? And most business owners would be thrilled to know they could get a 5X or a 10X return on what they spend with you, right? So you just have to really quantify the value, get tangible by the value you're providing, and then price based on that. So to answer the question of how do I charge 10K a month? You just need to think about providing 50K or 100K of value in a month, right? It's really that simple. So again, it all starts with first getting clear on the value you provide. And your action item, how you can actually do this, is look at the past, analyze the past, audit your past clients to understand the value you're providing. First thing, you could just sit down with a pen and paper and just reflect on your past projects, right? Reflect on conversations with your clients during the project, after the project, if you kept in touch over time and just reflect on what you've actually done for these people and how it's helped their business. Then step two, even better, is go interview your clients, particularly the clients that you've worked with a while ago and just see like, how did this help your business? What are the numbers? How did this make your business better? How did it help you grow? How did it help you be more profitable? How did it help you be more efficient? How did it help you cut costs? Whatever it is, ask them these questions to understand what was the overall impact of the work you did. And then you can start to get a clear picture for what this is, right? So that's your action item. now. Some of you might be thinking, I'm not actually bringing that much value to my clients, or I'm only dealing with very small businesses where even if I do a great job, the upside isn't very high. You know, there's only that much extra revenue or value I can bring to their business, right? And if that's the case, then you need to revisit your niche and start focusing on a new target client where you can be able to add six or seven figures of overall value for them. So what I hear a lot from agency owners is, I wanna charge more, but my clients keep telling me my price is too high. Have you ever thought that? And typically they think it's a matter of getting better at selling or like handling the prices objection. Like every time I hear this, I always get these like sales questions like, what's the script? What's the tactic? How can I get someone to not say that? Right. And sometimes it might be, but most of the time it's not. Most of the time they're just not talking to the right businesses and it's a problem of who they're selling to, not how they're selling. So for some of you, you'll need to actually define a new ICP, a new ideal customer that fits for your high ticket will offer. Maybe the people you're selling to now just straight up are too small and don't have the budget, right? It doesn't matter about the value you're providing 
or how, how good you get at sales, then maybe they're just not the businesses that have the spending power you need. If the business you're talking to are big enough, they're seven, eight figures, nine figures, even fortune, a thousand companies, whatever it is, great. Then you can keep doing what you're doing and just work on the offer and the lead gen and the sales process, right? Which we'll talk more about in part two and part three. But if the client you're dealing with now cannot support this high ticket whale offer, then you need to make a change on your niche focus. So maybe this could be the same industry you're already working, but just going up market to bigger businesses, or this could mean a new industry or new focus entirely, right? Whatever that is, whatever that is for you, that's fine, but you have to determine which one it is. Can you work with the same type of client you're working with, but just work with bigger companies, or do you have to really just change your focus entirely? If you have to change your focus, here's what you're looking for. You're looking for three things. They have to be big enough to afford the prices you want to charge and support that offer. Second, they need to have a big, painful, hairy, scary problem that your expertise and service aligns with because that's the only way they'll be willing to pay a premium, right? And then third, the outcome of you solving their problem and working together should bring enough value to their business to justify your costs and give them that at least 5x return, right? So here's what we covered so far in part one, what whales are, why it benefits your business, enhancing your offer and adjusting your niche. On part two and three, which we'll do over the next few weeks, we'll get into how to actually get these leads, how outreach is a little bit different when you're reaching out to whale clients, some strategies that have worked really well for me there, and I'll break down the exact strategy that helped me land my first 15K a month client I shared about four years ago, and also how sales is actually a little bit different when you're working with these bigger companies. So that's what we'll cover in part two and part three. And I hope you enjoyed this so far, and this is the reason that a lot of my clients are able to 5X or 10X what they're getting paid without doing more work and have a simpler, easier to run business. It's because we help them build an offer that's fit for whales, identify the right client type that would wanna buy it, and it all starts there. When you do this right, you can really take some big leaps and double or triple your revenue in a pretty short time frame, and you'll have way more profit on each client, meaning you get paid more for your time, so that's why this is so awesome. And beyond that, you'll have a simpler and less complex business with less client management for more revenue. Really exciting stuff. As we wrap up part one, I wanna offer a special invitation to a few of you watching this that want some help to actually do this together and you can schedule a 20 minutes to well clients call with us. In order to book this call, you must have an appetite for more clients and maybe you're tired of relying on word of mouth to get business and you're looking for a system. You need to already have an offer or a service that works, already have some clients but be looking to scale up. And most importantly, you must be ready to make some simple changes in your offer and be interested to try landing these well clients like we spoke about today. So if you'd actually like to put this into action, want some help from my team and I, you can book that call. So this will be a complimentary opportunity to speak with my team about how we can help you and put a plan together to help you have a systematic, structured approach to getting new leads and calls booked with whale clients, double or triple your revenue within the year like we've done for so many others, and have a more consistent flow of new clients rather than have up and down months and that revenue roller coaster. If you're interested in that, there's gonna be a link below for a 20 minute call, and this is totally complimentary and we'd love to chat with you. Other than that, you can always get in touch, DM me directly to talk further and work at a time. But anyways, thanks for watching part one. Hope you enjoyed this mini masterclass and excited to see you next week for part two. All right, thanks so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed part one of this three-part series. Part two has already been published as well, so you can click the link here on this video and go watch part two, it's on my channel, and I'll see you there. Now, if you're liking the content, make sure to subscribe so you can get notified of all of our new content. I post a new video every week about you know lead gen, B2B marketing, sales, so make sure to subscribe if you're not already subscribed. And uh, also, drop a comment below. Tell me what you liked about this video. I always love hearing from you guys. What was your biggest takeaway from today where we covered, you know, the intro of how to find and close well clients. So comment below, give this video a like, make sure to subscribe for the next one and definitely go over and watch part two.